Hello everybody, today we're preparing our longest made pizza, which will take four days to cook. Day one. We'll start with the longest one, namely the dough. We send 270 grams of ordinary wheat flour to the bowl, as well as 30 grams of whole grain. Pour 200 milliliters of water and put it into the mixer. Cook on the nozzle and knead the dough for about five minutes. Remove the bowl, cover with saran wrap, and put into the fridge for one hour. Then we take it back out and put it into the mixer. Pour a little cold water into the bowl and break five grains of light yeast. Mix. Pour into the mixer, salt, and knead. Take a bowl, pour some olive oil in, and smear it around with your hand. The kneaded dough is now sent to the bowl. Cover the top with saran wrap and leave it onto the table for half an hour. We take it out, stretch it out in different directions and put it back into the bowl. Right back where it started. Again, cover with saran wrap and leave for half an hour. Repeat the same thing. We are now preparing the longest dough vault designed for pizza. The idea behind this dough is that it is not infused as usual in the heat, but on the contrary, in the cold. Due to the fact that yeast ferments very slowly, the dough will have a completely different flavor and taste. We return it to the bowl. And now we leave it in the refrigerator for three days. We will prepare products for an unusual sausage. Pour water into a bowl. Add quite a lot of salt and mix. We put the beef tongue into the brine. It will be soaked and salted for a day and a half. Also, fatty pork and beef are needed from the meat. Cut all the meat into cubes. Now sprinkle the meat with nitrite salt. It works as a preservative and will increase the shelf life of our future sausage. We also add ordinary salt. We mix this all up. We put the meat into a bowl. Cover with the lid. And back into the fridge to salinate. Day two. We're gonna pickle some mushrooms, but not these. Pour water into a saucepan. Some garlic, a little bit of cloves, a mixture of peppers, mustard seeds, salt, and sugar. We will also cut chili peppers. And send them into the marinade. Cut a lemon. Cut out the juice and heat the marinade on the stove. While it is heating up, we will cut the champignons. The marinade is boiled, so you can put the mushrooms into it. We cook them for about 20 minutes. And they're ready. You can put them into a jar.
close it and leave the mushrooms to marinate in the refrigerator. Next, in line the stracciatella cheese. For four liters of the maximum fat milk into a saucepan, it is better to use homemade milk because it turns out from the store every other time. Put the pan on the stove. Insert your thermometer and cover with a lid. As soon as the milk has heated to 50 degrees, remove it from the stove. And pour in vinegar, seven tablespoons. Mix it all up. The milk will gradually peel off, and we have gathered such a big lump of cheese. Squeeze out excess moisture so that the cheese is dense. The cheese is back in the pan. Add salt to the serum. In hot whey, we bathe and stretch the cheese. Thus, it is salted. After about 10 minutes, we stretch the cheese into as long strips as possible and send it to cold water so that they cool down. That's it, we open up some heavy cream and pour it into a bowl. Add salt and mix. And now we take the cheese, cut it into segments of 10 centimeters, after which we dissolve it into thin strips with scissors and dump them into the salted cream. That's it, with that our stracciatelle is ready. We send it into the fridge and let it soak up the cream. Day three. Finally, we will make our sausage. The beef's tongue has already been well salted, so we send it to boil for two and a half hours, but not in boiling water. Its temperature should be about 87 degrees. When the time has come, we take out the tongue and put it in cold water. Now, using a knife, we cut off the outer shell from it. until it is completely cleaned. We cut it first into slices. Then into strips. And at the end into small cubes. Done. Then we take our salted meat out of the refrigerator, put it into a saucer of our meat grinder, and twist it to be minced meat. Be sure to use a fine grind here. Here we need the smallest minced meat possible. Done. Now we put this minced meat in a blender, and pour in powdered milk instead of phosphates, red pepper, and ice for the juiciness of the sausage. We put it in a blender and just grind it all into a paste. Done. We transfer the emulsion to a bowl. And make another batch of the same. To make the color of the sausage more beautiful, we add a bit of pink food dye quite a lot of peeled pistachios and cubes of beef tongue. We put the bowl in the mixer and mix it all up. Done. This is the sausage, only in its raw form. We transfer it to a cooking bag so that it can easily be stuffed into the sausage. There it is. But we don't have a sausage casing, therefore we will make it ourselves. We unfold the thermal package, cut off a piece of the desired length, then we mark it in the middle, and with the help of a vacuum cleaner, we solder it exactly along the line. After that, we cut along the seam. We get two shells. We cut off the tip of the cooking bag and fill it. We 
twist one edge. And fix it with a thread. Do the same thing with the other half. Cut off all the excess. The sausage should be packed very tightly so that it springs when falling. We made two sticks. And we will cook the sausage in Marmite. So we pour water. Up until the dash minimum. We set the gastro capacity with water. Set the highest heating. I have it at 80 degrees. We give time for all this to heat up and cook the sausage. After half an hour of cooking, we stick in a thermometer and pour some cold water in advance. As soon as the sausage reaches 70 degrees inside, we take it out and quickly cool it off. At this point, she's completely ready. We leave it in the fridge. The last fourth day. We're gonna make a creamy pizza sauce. To do this, we send a package of cream cheese into a bowl. Also add some dried basil, salt, and 200 milliliters of very heavy cream. All that's left is only to beat all this with a mixer to a very dense cream. This sauce is ready. Now we need a red onion. We peel it from the husk. And take out these small petals from the inside. Cut the remaining parts of the onion into cubes. I will also use leeks. We cut them in half, make incisions along, and also finely chop. Now we put the two types of onions into a small frying pan. Throw in some water and sugar, and mix it up. And to give an unusual flavor to the onion, pour in some whiskey. And over medium heat, caramelize the onion to such a transparent purple color. It's ready. We put it into a bowl. And the onion petals are simply fried quickly. We could cook our pizza in a wood burning oven. Just need to add firewood so that it warms up properly. some bell peppers on our pizza, but not in raw form, so we throw them directly into the fire. Two minutes and they've been charred. This is what we need. We scrape off the burn film with a knife. And behind that, we're left with an awesome pulp with an aroma of smoke. Separate the pulp from the seeds and tail. Cut into cubes. Let's open up our homemade sausage. And cut into it. Let's move on to the dough. Sprinkle the shovel with semolina so that the dough doesn't stick. We take out our super stretching dough, spread it onto the spatula, and begin to crush it with our hands. Next, we stretch the pizza base by tossing and strolling like this. And so on until the dough is not even enough to cover the entire shovel. The first layer is the sauce. We spread it out and smear it on the dough. Next, have the pieces of our homemade sausage. We 
open up a jar of our pickled mushrooms and spread them around. The main thing is to do it evenly. The next thing we got our stracciatella cheese. We lay it on four points on the pizza. Fried onion petals. And already in them, we spread caramelized onion with whiskey flavor. All that's left is to scatter the pulp of a bell pepper with the aroma of smoke. The stove is warmed up. We push the coals closer to the walls. Sweep it with the ashes. And send the pizza to the oven on hot stones. After about five minutes, we turn it around because the heat from the coals is much stronger. And all that's left to do is to hold it a little near the ceiling of our onion so that the cheese completely melts. At this point, the pizza is completely ready in 100 hours. Let's cut it up. And try it. Mmm, this pizza is freaking delicious. And what's most delicious is the dough. The crusts are eaten here with a bang. Let me know what else I should cook in 100 hours. And give this video some likes, subscribe to the channel. Bye, everybody.